to check whether you want to reply to the motion. You may proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I rise to reply, and in reply, I want to thank the House for standing with the committee. Madam Speaker, several people have spoken, and uh, it is instructive that only one senator has uh, disagreed with the committee, and that is uh, Senator Chimera. Madam Speaker, I would like to appeal to Senator Chimera, when it comes to voting, you should join the rest of the members of the House because we cannot, as a chamber, entertain any possibility of taking away money which, have, which has been granted through law to the counties of Kenya. Madam Speaker, many senators have truly enlightened the committee, and I want to applaud the contribution of the Senator of Nairobi. The Senator of Nairobi said something which appeared that I had not reflected on. He said that according to the Constitution, there shall be an annual division of revenue bill an annual, meaning, as he said, that this bill can only come before this chamber once every year. So if we attempt to entertain this amendment that amends Section 5, you we shall therefore, in effect, be bringing the Division of Revenue Bill twice before this chamber. Madam Speaker, therefore, we would be opening ourselves up to the possibility of litigious Kenyans, and there are many these days, taking our decision here to the High Court, and we shall lose. Because their position will simply be that the Constitution says there shall be an annual division of revenue bill. And the court will say, yeah, you are right. They have made it twice, and therefore they, they have contributed, contributed the Constitution. I would like to request our members in the National Assembly to bear with this reality and honestly allow the 400.16 billions to pass. Madam Speaker, there are many areas in ministries of government, in departments of government, and within the agencies of government where rationalization can be done so that this 20 billion can be found, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, members of the public might not be knowing that members of parliament are given a whooping 80 million shillings to attend to roads. Eight, Madam Speaker, times 290. It provides a colossal sum of money that would be room for a saving. Madam Speaker, they are similarly given money as bursaries where, again, if this is reversed, it can create room during this difficult year. Madam Speaker, members of the county, the, the National Assembly, have now faced the consequences of perpetuating the National Government Constituent Development Fund, which the courts found last week, or was it, yeah, last week, that it was unconstitutional. We need to reflect around this my take is that we should empower the constituency officers 
of members of parliament for oversight, but not for discharging executive roles. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, I do wish to reply and wish to request that pursuant to standing order number 66.3, the putting of this question be put at a different time for reasons operational. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Senator. I direct that the putting of question in respect of the motion that was being debated be deferred to tomorrow's session at 2.30. Uh, next order. Order number 17, the Wildlife Conservation and Management Amendment Bill, Senate Bills number 46 of 2023, second reading. Uh, Senator Jonas Mwaruma is not here, so this uh, motion will be deferred. Next order. Order number 18, the Wildlife Conservation and Management Amendment Bill, Senate Bills number 49 of 2023, second reading. Order number 19, the Cooperative Societies Amendment Bill, Senate Bills number 53 of 2023, second reading. Senator Mariam Sheikh Omar, you may proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I beg to move the Cooperative Society Bill, Senate Bill 53 of 2023, to read a second time. Madam Speaker, under the Constitution of Kenya, the regulation Cooperative Society is concurrence function between national and the county level of the government. The paragraph 7E of the part two of the fourth schedule to the Constitution provide that the trade development and regulations include cooperative societies, a function which fall under the county government. This means that the governance of the primary cooperative society is bestowed upon, upon the county government. Upon the other hand, the national government is mandated to come up with national policy on regulation of cooperative society. It is also prudent that the national government be responsible for regulation of the APIC society and the cooperative union because of their nature and vital role in, economic, in, econo in economy of the country. Madam Speaker, the cooperative society number 12 of 1997 was enacted 1997 was and came into operation in 1st June 1998. Clearly, enactment and commencement of this act precede the 2010 Constitution dispensation. This necessitates that the amendment of the Cooperative Society Act Number 12 of 1997 to align it with the Constitution of 2010 and set out the respective function of the national government and of those of the county government are regard the regard the governance of the cooperative society madam speaker clause two of the bill seek to amend the section two of the act to broaden the definition of the cooperative society to include provisionally registered cooperative societies it also seek to up, to update the terminology by removing the term the definition of the term ministry and insert a new definition as cabinet secretary, the county executive committee, committee members and the director to align with the current administrative and structural change in the government. 
Madam Speaker, Clause 3 of the bill to seek to introduce Section 2A into a principal act which denotes the guiding principle of the cooperative society, including non-discrimination, voluntary, and open membership, democratic member control, autonomy, and independence. It also emphasizes in public participation, continuity training, and cooperative corporations among the society so it's concerning for greater community responsibility and commitment and equity in income distribution, all of which are designed to uphold the core values and effective governance of the cooperative society. Madam Speaker, Section 4, the clause 4 of the bill introduced a new part 1A to the principal act specifying the function and obligation of the national and the county government in promoting devolution, in promoting rather devolve, devolution, devolve, development and effective management of cooperative society in accordance with constitutional mandate. Madam Speaker, Section 5 of the bill introduced a new Section 3A into a principal act rather after Section 3, establishing the, the office of the county director of cooperative as an office that should be within the county public service. The clause designates this office with a direct appointment by the county's executive committee, committee member from existing public officer in the county service. Madam Speaker, additional personnel may be designated as necessary for the office efficient performance. The appointee of the director role must have a knowledge and experience in administrations and the management of cooperative society. Madam Speaker, Clause 6 amend the Section 4 of the, of the Principal Act revising the registrations process for cooperative society to align with the cooperative principle and regulation standard. Madam Speaker, legislate section clause 7 legislates detailed registration protocols for primary societies with defined steps, timelines, ensuring transparency and efficiency for a new applicant seeking registration. Madam Speaker, clause 8 updates the act by stipulating a clear registration process for cooperative union and APIC society with defini definitive 30 days decision period from the commission. Clause 9 introduced a new section 6A specifying the ground for rejecting the cooperative society registration and enhancing governance and compliance standard. Madam Speaker, Clause 10 amend Section 7, permitting provisional registration of the society for up to year specific condition aimed at facilitating their path toward full compliance. Madam Speaker, Clause 11 add a new Clause A, 7A, section in the Principal Act, enabling the Commissioner to suspend or cancel registration for serious infrastructure, infrastructures, implementing robust oversight mechanism. Madam Speaker, Section 12 and 13, revise the amendment procedure for society by laws and established a structured appeal process for cooperative society dissatisfying with administrative decision. Madam Speaker, Section 14 and 220 enhance the director involving in management and administrative decision, ensuring the roles are recognized alongside the commissioner in the act. Madam Speaker, Clause 21 and 22 is strip line. Approval process for the society, amalgamations and divisions with, facts, with focus on compliance and timely decision. 
Madam Speaker, Clause 23 proposed increased penalties within the Act to, for, to, to detain, effect, and amend, and, and aiming to ensure adherence to the cooperative guidelines. Madam Speaker, Clause 24 to 30 empower the Commissioner or the Director to intervene in various operational aspects of the cooperative society, including liquidation, inquisite, and financial inquiries in reinforcing governance and accountability. Madam Speaker, Clause 31 to 32, 33 rather, further integrates the director's role into existing framework of the act, affording them, affording them the joint responsibility with the commissioner in a specific context. Madam Speaker, Clause 34 reformulates the condition for dissolving the cooperative society while Clause 35 and 36 repeal outdated section of the Principal Act. Madam Speaker, the Clause 37 amend the Principal Act by replacing the Section 64 with a new provision, a new, a new provisions that apply specific section of insolving, Insolvency Act, as modified by, by modified by Schedule to the Act. To the consider to liquidation of the cooperative society in the same way they should apply in registered company. Madam Speaker, the cabinet secretary is also given authority to amend schedule by order with this clause 38 and 39, given authority to a commissioner or a director to appoint liquidator. Madam Speaker, 40 to 43 clause address liquidation process and the authority vested in the commissioner and the director over this procedure, emphasizing the regulatory roles. Mr. Madam Speaker, Clause 44, 47, 247 increase, rather Clause 44 to 47 introduce penalties for malpractice and outline the accountability measures for individual managing the cooperative society. Madam Speaker, 48 to 53 clause discuss the establishment, establishment function and flexibility of the cooperative tribunal, enhancing its capacity to handle disputes and appeal effectively. Madam Speaker, 54 and 55 detail remuneration of the tribal members and appointment of secretary to ensure the body's effective operations. Madam Speaker, 54 and 57 empower Judicial Service Commission to establish tribunal branches in the counties while clauses 58 through 65, 63 rather, update terminologies throughout the act. This amendment reflects the shift toward gender neutral language and comparably the title in replacing the minister with the cabinet secretary and the chairman with the chairperson. Madam Speaker, 64 to 66 clause clarify the role of the director and the transitions transition power to the power, to the director of the uh, public prosecution. Madam Speaker, as you noted from the remark on the bill, the proposed amendment to the Cooperative Society Act number no. 12 of 1997 are vital to align with the statutory framework with the constitutional of 2010 and enhance the governance of the cooperative societies. This change clarify the concurrent roles of the nat national and the county government, streamline the change, streamline registration and regulation process, and promote standardized tribunal, tribunal procedures with this amendment. We aim to strengthen the cooperative sector level 
sector level structure allowing it to better contribute to the Kenyan socio economic growth within a robust, transparent, and accountability framework. Madam Speaker, with those moving, uh, uh, with those uh, few main, main remarks and main amendment of the Cooperative Society of 1990, 1997, I, seco I now, Mr. Speak, Madam Speaker, I now beg to move and request Senator, Senator Cherege to second. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator Chiradige. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. From the onset, I want to, to congratulate Senator Shea Komar. Uh, she is continuing to distinct herself as one of the prolific legislators of this session. And I'm happy she has brought a very serious bill that as a house, all of us 67 should be here. Because most of our farming community and most Kenyans, even here in Senate, Mr. S M Mr. Madam Speaker, we depend on the livelihood of cooperative societies. Even Chair, uh, Ms. Madam Speaker, personally, I'm a member of LSK Sarko Society. Myself, when I went to school, both primary, especially secondary school, in the great schools of African sons and gentlemen of Kapsabad Boys High School, which are produced the two presidents, the late retired president Daniel Toroi, teacher Amoy, and the current president of the Republic of Kenya, uh, Dr. William Samoe Arap Ruto. And of course, you are truly were the products of the great Kapsabed Boys and Gentlemen High School. And my school fees was paid largely through Mualimu Sako because my mother was a teacher for a very long time. So I can imagine if we didn't have societies, maybe I didn't have a privilege or honor to attend my high school, uh, uh, Madam Speaker. And therefore, Madam Speaker, it is also what to state on the floor of the house, Madam Speaker, that I'm immediately formally the vice chairperson of Parliamentary Sako Society, uh, Madam Speaker, for the last two years. And the other day in the principle of democracy, I allowed another vice chairperson uh, to take over. Madam Speaker, the currently I sit as a director of Parliamentary Sako Society, Madam Speaker. And therefore, and that Sako, members will tell you that the circle we run here in parliament, both uh, Bunge circle, parliamentary circle, Madam Speaker, is very critical to welfare and the economic, social, economic interest of our, our members, Madam Speaker. Because under two hours, I don't think there is any other efficient circle in, in, in the Republic of Kenya or Africa or the world where your financial request is processed within two hours. Madam Speaker, those are reforms that I and my colleagues have done in the board of uh, parliamentary circle in building the basis of my argument in seconding this wonderful motion, Madam Speaker. So circle is an integral part of each and every Kenyan in this republic, Madam Speaker. From farmers, professionals, Madam Speaker, and many others. And therefore, although I saw a, 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 a story, I don't know whether they pick it from SASRA, SASRA the regulatory that regulates cooperative society, that uh, our loans as parliamentary circle is exposed to the tune of 64 billion, which is unsecured. Many people don't know that parliamentary circle in itself, Madam Speaker, where a number of us are members, and I sit as director, I've told you I was the former vice chair of that board, Madam Speaker, is with, we, 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 our loan is tailor-made to be secured within the five years, and we don't give our loans below the deposit that you give as a member, as a parliamentary circle. And I want to challenge, I'm happy the commissioner uh, uh, is working into the floor of the house, the or parliamentary circle commission, that even in Bunge circle or Pakoso, Madam Speaker, is that the parliamentary circle commission should not allow members to, 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 to take or not to allow to be deducted from their payroll to enjoy the privilege of Pakas, Madam Speaker. So what I saw in business daily is misleading, Madam Speaker, and I think they should get their facts right 
because as a society that as his members, I've told you, Madam Speaker, this is a parliamentary circle that within two hours you can have your cash in your bank account. I have not come across any other. Madam Speaker, even where I come from, I know you come from also from a farming community. We rely every on circles, from dairy ones, tea, coffee circles, the Ikipsiele Cooperative Society in Tindred. I have Lel Chega in Mosoria, Chesume, Sub County. I have Kapia Dairies Cooperative Society, Madam Speaker. Many societies, a number of them, Madam Speaker, that continue, even Koilot, Madam Speaker, that runs the dairy farming in Nandil Sub County. I have Mwalimu Sako and Boresha Sako that run and assist our profession. Even LSK, I'm a member of LSK Sako Society, Madam Speaker, where you and Senior Council and Senator Sike are members of it. But you know, Senator Sike looks more wealthier, so I don't know whether he needs Sako, because Sako, Madam Speaker, always come in Andy. You, know, you and me know, Sako has always been our last resort, especially when you are facing financial problems, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, and therefore, Sakos are very critical. Madam Speaker, I can give the House very brief statistics as I second and celebrate the good work done by Senator Shea Homer, is that, and I hope to see her elected next time, especially from the region she comes from. But as speaker, and of course she's a committed member, I'm the Vice Chairperson of the Senate Public Accounts Committee. She is one of my committed members of the Public Accounts Committee. But as speaker, by the latest report, is that the cooperative societies that we have registered in Kenya, because we are amending the Cooperative Societies Act of CAP 490 that was revised in 2012, and we are doing this. The membership of cooperative societies was 25,050 in the country. Madam Sika, the membership of these circles across the country is 14 million. How many are we? We are around 50 million Kenyans. So it is good to know that almost half of Kenyans are members of circles across our country, Madam Speaker. What is the effect to the economy? Madam Speaker, 30% of national savings come from circles. That is close to 7.3 billion Kenyan shillings, Madam Speaker, or 700 million US dollars. That is very critical, which means if 14 million Kenyans are saving 7.3 billion through circles, we can make astronomical growth, Madam Speaker, in terms of increasing both primary circles in our villages through the farming sectors, Madam Speaker. And even I know teachers, Madam Speaker, I have told you I'm a beneficiary of Mwalimu Sako and the Sako that assist the teachers. Every, and I think teachers are doing very well. Even, Madam Speaker, I saw, I am surprised that the police Sako is one of the best run uh, circles in the country, Madam Speaker. We have the teacher Sako, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, while at it, Madam Speaker, I saw the communication by the new cabinet secretary of, uh, of uh, education. I don't know his name. Is it called uh, Julius Mikosi or somebody? Uh, the new CS of education. Julius Mikosi, Madam Speaker, I think so. Do you wish to be informed? Yes, by yes, please. On the, on the name only. Senator Mugeni yes, seems uh, more informed on the subjects. Yes, uh, first, uh, you know, Ms. Madam Speaker. It's uh, embarrassing to the legal profession that uh, Senator Sherage, who is a lawyer, does not know the full names of a senior lawyer, like the CS Education. Madam Speaker, uh, CS Education, for information, is called Julius Migosi Ogamba. And he's, a, he's your senior in the profession. You ought to have known his full names, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. I, I assume Senator Cheradige was having a problem with the pronunciation. Correct. I had him speak out the name, but the pronunciation was all upside down. S sorry, Senator my, my, my apologies. I am well informed. You know the reason I might not know him? He has never represented me in my legal troubles. If I had a legal troubles uh, mentioning Senator Sige and Senator uh, Okongo Mugeni, then it would be a big deal. But I'm happy to be informed. Uh, the new CS of education, Julius Migosi Okamba, a, a lawyer, of course. Madam Speaker, I was disappointed by his statement yesterday. Yes, the University of Nairobi. Madam Speaker, I was a bit chittery and uncomfortable over the statement he, he made yesterday, Madam Speaker. B because 
because uh, I'm informed she's also a classmate to Senator William Cheptumo. Madam Speaker, I, I was wondering, because the statement he made yesterday, while I did, because teachers depend on SACO, that the, the junior secondary schools, 46,000 need to apply afresh to TAC for employment. That is a divisive statement. But as speaker, when the appropriation was being passed in the National Assembly, we agreed that 19 billion to 18, 18, 19 billion should be allocated to confirm, not to apply, to confirm junior secondary schools in terms to transit from contract to permanent and pensionable. So, Madam Speaker, I hope the CS can clarify because I am not having peace. My colleagues or members of parliament, including senators, are not having peace because they're asking us, as junior secondary schools, Madam Speaker, we want to transit to permanent and pension. And I hope since they, they come from, with the one from the same community with senior council, Senator Okongo Mugeni and his colleague, kindly whisper to him uh, as you discuss that that statement did not come out very well, and I hope he can rectify that. Because, Madam Sika, we know TSC is an epitome of corruption, and we would not want to go to that direction, Madam Sika. Madam Sika, on the member, the, the agenda of SACO, Madam Sika, is to protect members' interests and social economic welfare. Madam Sika, many members who apply to Picasso have seen my signature in their checks, and I'm proud to risk them in their financial distress and a problem sometimes as Picasso. And I want to encourage more members to join Picasso. Because I have told you two hours. If ground in Mechamuka, sorry, if ground is on fire, we can always be you are the best option. Even when the PSC parliamentary circle delay in our exchequer releases, Madam Speaker, we always come in rescue and assist, Madam Speaker. Madam Sika, on the issue to, for the information of the House, because we are discussing cooperative societies, the first cooperative society that was registered in August, February 1931 was Kenya Cooperative Crimaries Cooperative Society, KCC. Nowadays they call it New KCC. While KCC is facing a lot of troubles, Madam Sika, it was one of the first registered, Madam Sika. When I was growing up, there was a lot of milk, there was payment by KC, KCC. Our fathers, our mothers, our grandfather used to work to marshals and buy brand new 504 Pujo, Madam Speaker, with money when farming was rewarding. Nowadays, to be a farmer is brokers are eating more, middlemen are eating more than farmers. Madam Speaker, farmers are suffering. So in this new KCC, and I want to celebrate uh, what we have done as a parliament, that in this financial year, Madam Speaker, we have appropriated 1.5 billion as a revolving fund to new KCC, Madam Speaker, to ensure we pay 53 shillings, Madam Speaker, to the farmer per liter. I am happy the president has said, out of 53 shillings, three shillings will go to cooperative societies that are used to run farmers' uh, dairy products. And I'm happy because that three shillings, Madam Speaker, that three shillings will be very critical in running the circles across the country. Madam Speaker, one of the challenges that you face both in Murima or Mount Kenya and Rift Valley over the coffee issues, Madam Speaker, is also the running of, uh, Madam Speaker, is 1931. Kenya Farmers Association was formed, KFA. My people call it KFA because of how you pronounce Madam Speaker. was very instrumental in the growth of farming in our community. You would see everything, KFA everywhere, used to pay school fees and what have you, Madam Sika. Even as we talk, another one critical was also the collapse of the corporate coffee, uh, coffee society, Madam Sika. There was in 1907 the formation of Kenya Planters Cooperative Union, Madam Sika. That was critical, Madam Sika. All these cooperative societies that belong, even the crisis we have over coffee uh, cooperative societies in the country. I've told you, for example, you have one in Kipshele Cooperative Society in Tindre Sub County, Madam Speaker. These societies are facing financial challenges and financial troubles simply because, Madam Speaker, simply because of mismanagement, corruption, and also the limited liability of some of these circles. And that is why I expected DCI by now. They should tell us who has been eating the cooperative society's money from Kenyans, Madam Speaker, and they should be arrested and prosecuted. Madam Speaker, while I appreciate, we have seen even Mumia Sugar Company and others, uh, cooperative societies, outgrowers of sugarcane. 
Madam Sika, whenever there is bailout of millions of shillings, Madam Sika, where do this money come from? It is you and me who pay taxes to, to, to pay back bailouts for cooperative societies, yet the directors who had the money have stashed their money in Cayman Islands, Madam Sika, in Switzerland, in some uh, tax havens that we don't know, Madam Sika, uh, in this republic. Madam Sika, the essence and the cooperative society as we review, I want to thank Senator Sheikh Omar because the, the gist of this bill, Madam Sika, is to clean up, to clean up the bill of cooperative societies as was revised in 2012 and ensure the cooperative society is aligned with devolution, Madam Speaker. I'm happy the introduction of new chapters has tried to align because cooperative society is a co-shared function. I know, Madam Speaker, for the information, when we talk about APEC society, it is a national level. That is what we call APEC society. We have cooperative union, Madam Speaker. Cooperative unions means that it, its membership is restricted to primary societies. Primary societies, Madam Speaker, means it is restricted to individuals, uh, individuals within the society, Madam Speaker. All this, Madam Sika, will ensure there is accountability. Madam Sika, I'm happy that uh, they will be county director of cooperatives, and therefore, Madam Sika, I agree, we need to do cleanup of legislative interventions in the country, Madam Sika. We need to still continue to do cleanup. Because now, cooperative societies are in machinani, and therefore, the introduction of the county director of cooperatives is very critical. Because issues of agriculture are more devolved, others, there are circles, Madam Speaker. We know Matatu Sako in, in, in various places, Madam Speaker, like in Kapsabet. Although it's sad to, to say that in Kapsabet, Sako, Matatus that operate between Eldoret, Kapsabet, Kapsabet, Chavakali, towards Vihiga, towards Kisumu, don't have a good bus terminus. Because, Madam Speaker, when you go to Kapsabet, it has not been put at a standard. The governor has refused to ensure that there is an ultra-modern bus terminal within Kapsabet town. And it is sitting next to the Kapsabet market, where that market, there is no sanitary facilities, there is no toilets, it is very dirty, Madam Sika, there is no electricity. The, 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 the Mamamboga are putting their, their produce on the, on the ground, which endangers our people from diseases that are communal or diseases that are not sanitary, Madam Speaker. So the appointment of a cooperative society a director of the county is very critical and will ensure, Madam Speaker, the registration of primary societies, especially, Madam Speaker, by ensuring that we go, Madam Speaker, we go into uh, uh, various issues on, in terms of registration. I think, colleague senators, through the speaker, if we want our economy to be strong in the country, Madam Speaker, did I see Senator Okio Mutata? Oh, sorry, I thought I saw Senator Okio Mutata. Madam Speaker, if we want to grow the, the wealth of our people, and I know the region you come from, they have known the secret of circles from both Matatu, farming, and many others. When you go to Mount Kenya region, even where Senator Mundigi, the spokesperson in Kwazo, Mount Kenya East, will tell you there are so many circles that belong to tea, that belong to coffee, Madam Speaker. A number of them, because I'm told that seat went a long time ago. Madam Speaker, those regions that have circles, especially people from Mount Kenya, have known the essence and the importance of circles. And that is why they are able, even we used to have Sirgoek a cooperative society, where even when you go to Eldore Town, that was it that started 40, 50 years ago, are owning serious buildings, Madam Speaker. Even our communities from northern part of Kenya, but I'm sick, they normally do, even the Indian community normally run generational wealth in a level like the circles. And like, for example, I think Cooperative Bank of Kenya started as a society, it has transited to the bank, Madam Sika, and I think that is very important. So the primary society, I'm happy it has been simplified, Madam Sika, because I'll make four comments. The primary society has been simplified for registration for any person, especially even Wakulima who understand, because the average age of a farmer is 50 years. Kumbai was right, I had seen Senator Okio Mtata, Madam Speaker. I thought he is in court challenging the appointment of Inspector General of Police, Douglas Kanja. Madam Speaker, when you look at clause number seven on compliance, this is just a matter of procedure to clean up the bill, the cooperative society, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, on the issue of certificate of registration or provision, 
I think that is very critical in issuance of those uh, to primary. In fact, uh, I'm happy that the timeline that has been given Director of Cooperative Society has been given to ensure that uh, there is time limit in terms of issuance to the certificate, Madam Speaker, as provision of that clause, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, on the issue of uh, the role of uh, Director of Cooperative Society in counties is to create civic education, to ensure, Madam Speaker, that all farmers are given uh, the proper and accountability. What, uh, what we need to do, Madam Speaker, is to ensure oversight. I have insisted the biggest underbelly, the soft underbelly, Madam Speaker, just give me one 30 seconds, Madam Speaker, to, to second properly. The biggest, the biggest threat, in conclusion, Madam Speaker, the biggest threat to cooperative you societies. Have one minute, uh, Senator. Thank you. And who is saying no? Madam Speaker, the biggest threat to cooperative societies is corruption. And mean measurement by the people who manage cooperative societies. Madam Speaker, with those very many remarks, while well, I congratulate Senator Sheikh Omar for providing this prolific, very concise and precise bill towards cleanup and enhancement of cooperative society, it is my honor, pleasure, single duty, with a lot of honor and privilege, Madam Speaker, to therefore second this bill, the Cooperative Societies Amendment Bill 2023. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Honorable Senators, I propose the question that the Cooperative Societies Amendment Bill, Senate Bills Number 53 of 2023, be now read a second time. Uh, this motion is now open for debate. And I want to give the first chance to Senator Sigei Wakili, Sigei Wakili, to contribute to this motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for allowing me to contribute to this very important uh, amendment to the bill. And before I, Madam Speaker, speak to the bill, I want to applaud uh, my sister, Senator Mariam, for taking the bold step and seeking to amend this very old act to align it with the Constitution. Madam Speaker, uh, you will note that as at the point of uh, the introduction by Senator Mariam, she indicated that the principal act first was enacted in 1997 came into force in 1998, and that was prior to the enactment of the 2010 Constitution. And therefore, the present proposed amendments by Senator is first to align the provisions of that act with the Constitution of 2010 that brought in, among other things, devolved governments. And Madam Speaker, this is one of those very critical bills that will enhance the support, the coming together of various cooperatives of pharma societies, both at every small level at the county level, leading to the enactment of the Apex Society. Madam Speaker, the alien provisions which I would like to highlight in this particular amendment is the introduction of Part 1A to the bill. Madam Speaker, this section provides for the mandate of the national government and the county government. And in particular, Madam Speaker, the requirement that at the national level there is need for the national government to establish national policy on the framework and standards for the development and growth of cooperative societies. Madam Speaker, this will include creation of also uh, the maintainer, sorry, of register of approved audit firms in the cooperative sector and further the development, among others, of intergovernmental relations. Madam Speaker, when you look at the role that the former commissioner of cooperatives, and now, of course, uh, there is an amendment to replace commissioner with director, 
particularly because of the devolved government, the aspect with which we would require cooperatives to be managed is something that this act has uh, tried to break down by sharing the roles in that particular part 1A of the national government with that of the county government. Introduction of 2D also gives a breakdown of the roles of the county government, which was not there before. This, Madam Speaker, will ensure that at any given level of government, whether it is the county or the national, members who've come together, farmers who have decided to coalesce and set up an entity to support their businesses, their enterprises, or their farming activity have got a place to manage those resources in form of a society which is governed by law. Madam Speaker, the introduction under the new section 3A which creates the office of a county director of cooperatives is very critical in the uh, sense that uh, this particular office, though it currently exists, because I am aware that they are position of a county director of cooperatives, but who reports to the CC of the relevant department or ministry at the county level. The office of the county director under this amendment has been given specific roles it has been provided with who to report to, what role they are supposed to make or to do, especially with regards to the registration of cooperative societies, in this case, the primary cooperative society. The introduction of this particular position and also renaming will ensure that the management of cooperative societies at the county level is streamlined to the extent that if there are issues as regards registration, as regards the management, or any aspect that requires intervention at the county level, the members of a society or the society generally will have a place to go to report and uh, certain timelines have been provided for for purposes of action that were not in existence in the previous act. Madam Speaker, under the seventh clause, that is clause seven, clause seven seeks to amend the act by introducing section 6A. Section 6A is the section that is relevant for the registration of now what we call primary society. In this case, Madam Speaker, it gives a requirement that for a society to be registered as a primary society, that is at the county level, it must comprise of not less than 10 members where they will be required, among other things, to provide for the minutes, prescribed fee, copies of the bylaws that they will require that will be required to, to have information on the names, addresses, signature of the ten members or more than ten members for that matter, and that these members have met the requirements to come together and form a primary society. Of critical importance, Madam Speaker, is the requirement that the director is given specific timelines within which he or she is required upon receipt of the application to undertake the registration. And in this case, Mr. Speaker, there is an introduction of section 6A subsection 3 that gives the director a maximum of 20 days within which he or she is required to do what is described as pre-registration procedures. In this case, Madam Speaker, the director is given limited timeline for purposes of efficiency in terms of registration. I do know that various societies always would have challenges where upon putting in an application, they don't get any response, the registration takes longer than expected or ordinarily is expected and is reasonable, but this law will ensure that the director is supposed to undertake pre-registration uh, procedures within a maximum of 20 days. That enhances efficiency. It encourages members also to reduce on the waiting period for purposes of registration. After the pre-registration procedures, that is 20 days, the director is required to submit that particular application 
to the commissioner within seven days. The commissioner thereafter, under the provisions of the new sub, uh, section 6A, subsection 6, is required, the commissioner is required within a period of 14 days to ensure that the society is registered. In total, Madam Speaker, and this is very critical, it's very important. In total, a society that is seeking to have it registered can have its certificate of registration within a maximum of 31 days. That is a very, very important provision in law that besides efficiency, it encourages members to formalize their caucuses to formalize their registration processes and ensure that they can get the benefit of a registered entity. This 31 days, Madam Speaker, is now cast in law and I fully, fully support this particular provision. Further, Madam Speaker, as, required, as, re as, requires, as regards the provision of an apex society, there is also a time limit within which the commissioner is expected to undertake the registration and the introduction of new section 6 subsection 4 where the commissioner is dissatisfied with the document submitted that the society is not fit for registration as applied that communication must be done in writing within 30 days from the date of receipt of the application that also limits the delay processes that we normally subject registration applications by cooperative societies and in this case if there is a requirement that has not been met by a society seeking to be registered it takes only the commissioner a period of maximum 30 days to write back for purposes of that particular cooperative society to comply with the requirement failure to communicate madam speaker if the commissioner is uh, fails to register a cooperative society or fails to give reasons for rejecting that registration within a period of 30 days, the law says that society shall be deemed to have been registered. This is a, a, a sort of a, a default position that the law is setting on the office of the commissioner of uh, societies, such that if the commissioner is uh, delaying the registration process, or if there are delays in the communication, the law has given a default position such that if we don't get a communication within a period of 30 days, the society will by law be deemed to have been registered. That is a very important provision that safeguards the interest of societies that seek to formalize their registration process. Madam Speaker, Section, se section 10, sorry, Clause 10, that seeks to Amend Section 7 of the Principal Act provides for a very interesting uh, requirement that requires the director or the commissioner, in the event that there are certain boxes that have not been ticked by a society seeking to have it re itself registered, that director or the commissioner is in law allowed to give a provisional registration uh, certificate or rather a provisional registration. And in the provisional registration, the society is directed on the areas with which they have not been, uh, they have not complied with, so that within the timeline, the law uh, gives them, um, uh, the law uh, gives them a period within which they are supposed to do, that is 14 days, failure to do that, um, uh, they are supposed Actually, not 14 days, Madam Speaker, this is a correction. The law gives them a period not exceeding one year to ensure that they comply with certain uh, requirements that they could or they might not have applied as at the time of registration. That provisional registration, Madam Speaker, is also a very important step in facilitating the cooperative society to perform the functions of a society, to protect the interest of the members, to protect the interest of those who trade with the society. Because as long as they have achieved a certain threshold, that provisional registration period of one year allows them to comply within that one year, failure to which then the law also sets a default uh, position which will require of them to be deregistered 
or otherwise comply with the provision that with, with, the, with the requirement that the law had uh, given to them. Madam Speaker, this is a very important law. We come from uh, uh, counties that farmers can only come together in what they do, whether it is uh, milk. I come from Bomet County where almost in every division there is a cooling plant for purposes of uh, collecting milk from farmers and uh, from there moving it to the next step and it is the societies that helps them to do it. The tea growing areas where we have uh, tea factories, most of those members or farmers who uh, uh, harvest their produce to those factories have set up a number of cooperative societies. It has set up a number of groupings that coalesce together to ensure that they collect resources, including uh, uh, funds that they also utilize because they uh, facilitate uh, financial uh, capacity of members who are, ma who are farmers and members who are not necessarily farmers, but traders who trade with the farmers. In this case, for instance, we have got the Marisha Sako, that is one of the national uh, uh, circles that support farmers. It supports a uh, business community, it supports teachers, it supports every other person who either would trade as a society or as an individual or as a farmer. We've got a number of, of them in, in my county, Madam Speaker, and this law will not only support the enhancement of the farmers in terms of uh, giving them capacity to uh, uh, get uh, loan facilities or save the little they get or get even places where they would be uh, able to supply their produce and get a payment uh, within time, but beyond that, it also helps them to appreciate the need to come together. Madam Speaker, in further amendments to the Principal Act, Clause 25 of the Principal Act provides uh, for the registration of charges. This is an area where, uh, where, where most, most of the members, once they have taken a facility, for example, without a security, they are supposed to be uh, registered in a way. This section, which seeks to introduce a requirement of the society to register charges, is important in protecting the assets of members as well as that of the society. Se subsection 4 provides that failure to do it, this is a creation of an offense. What I would propose, and this I'll ask uh, Senator Mariam to re uh, relook at, is the penalty that provision provides, where an officer of a cooperative society will commit an offense in the event of a failure to register a charge. Oh. The fine that is provided for in this law is a fine not exceeding 5,000 shillings for every, um, ev every day during which the default continues. I would propose that we could enhance the penalty that is payable for three reasons. One, it will ensure that it acts as a deterrent for purposes of uh, non-compliance on the part of those who are responsible. And two, it will also, being a, a little bit uh, punitive, it, it should be higher. 5,000 is too little to act as a deterrent for someone to breach that requirement of the law. And if we can enhance that, it will serve the purpose for which the law is, uh, is, is, is uh, enacted. And uh, Madam Speaker, as I end, I know this law is seeking to align its provisions with the Constitution. I am very sure at the end of this uh, debate, there will be a number of uh, proposals that can be made or that will be made by members to ensure that even as we seek to align it, we also update it to the latest developments in law, the latest developments in the sector of cooperative societies, and to ensure that the objective as laid out in section um, three or rather 2A of the act is fully complied with. Madam Speaker, as I support, I once again want to congratulate Senator for taking this very important uh, bill to ensure that our farmers, our societies, our circles are fully aligned to the latest in uh, the provisions of our constitution. Madam Speaker, I support and thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Mogeni Eric Okong. Uh, th th thank you, Madam Speaker. I first want to thank 
uh, the sponsor of uh, uh, this motion, this, um, uh, this bill rather, Senator Miriam, uh, for thinking about the welfare of the farmers and business people of this country. Because, Ms. Madam Speaker, the main beneficiaries of this bill uh, will not be just members of uh, Okoso, but our farmers, our business people, uh, our bosses who have elected us into this house. Madam Speaker, I want to begin by joining Senator uh, Cherage in uh, giving my hearty congratulations to Senator Miriam and also to encourage her that she has demonstrated her ability as a very good uh, uh, legislator and uh, sponsor of bills. And I hope the people of Mandela have taken note. And in 2027, they will think about her positively. And we wish you well. Madam Speaker, the story that was in the business daily today is, is alarming and misleading, especially on the financial status of uh, Pocoso. Pocoso is one of the strongest uh, cooperative societies that we have in the country, one of the most healthy financially. Madam Speaker, any member of parliament will tell you that if you go to Pocoso, you apply for a loan, you will get that loan in a record two hours. I think everybody who is a member here can be a witness, can bear me witness. So when the daily business uh, writes such an alarming uh, story that portrays Pocoso negatively, uh, that is the height of uh, irresponsible journalism, uh, especially from a newspaper that is owned by a respected media house like Nation. It's regrettable. And I hope, uh, Madam Speaker, this matter was discussed today at a uh, very high level within the leadership of Parliament and the management of Pacoso. I hope once the business day gets communication, they'll correct the erroneous impression that was created. Madam Speaker, we all know that our loans in Pacoso are term-based. You cannot get a loan that is beyond your tenure in, in Parliament, which is normally five years, Madam Speaker. So the chances of defaulting are almost close to zero, Madam Speaker, because you must service your circle loan, finish it within that period. And when you apply, those who approve your loan will take that into account, Madam Speaker. So that story is uh, mislead misleading, uh, unnecessarily alarming, and I want to appeal to members of parliament uh, not to be swayed by that negative coverage, but to continue supporting our strong uh, SACO, PACOSO, that has come to the aid of many of us. Even me, as I speak here, Madam Speaker, I've rushed to PACOSO, applied for emergency loan to pay fees for my children. I'm not like Senator Sige, who I'm told is uh, financially well endowed and doesn't need a SACO. But some of us rely on that SACO. So when I saw that story, I was the first person to call the chairman, uh, Honorable Macau. And I asked him, what, what is this I'm reading? I don't think this is a true reflection of the financial position of, uh, of, of Pacoso. I appeal to the journalist who wrote that story to always cross-check his facts before releasing such a story. Having said that, Madam Speaker, I was also talking to uh, a Kenyan. When, when I was uh, talking to the minister, to, to Honorable Macaus with uh, a Kenyan who had come to see me in my office. And you know, there are some laws we pass on this floor, Madam Speaker, which are extremely damaging to the pockets of Kenyans without thinking. At times, in even damage to our own staff who support us here. You know, that Kenyan told me, Madam Speaker, that uh, the deductions from SHIF, which is at 2.75% of the gross salary of Kenyans, and 1.5% from the housing levy, Madam Speaker, has made some Kenyans to have negative net income. Because when they were applying these loans, there was no projection that uh, a new taxation will come, okay, in form of a shift and housing levy that will eat deep into pay slips of Kenyans. So as members of parliament also, 
Notwithstanding the party that sponsored us to this house, so speak, we should legislate having in mind the interest of Kenyans, including, because I'm a commissioner, I know what I'm saying, Madam Speaker, including our own members of staff, Madam Speaker. There are people who have fallen into problems because they are not able to service their circle loans because of these very punitive levies that have been introduced into the pay slips. And Madam Speaker, the misfortune is this. These levies are based on gross salary, not net, Gro gross <laughs> salary. So if you earn 100,000, before pay comes in, there is that liability to shift to a uh, housing levy. And that's, that's what's contributing to the default rate that we saw. So I am appealing to all of us, me included, Madam Speaker, that uh, we be conscious that these laws that we pass affect many Kenyans, millions of Kenyans, Madam Speaker, both in government and in the informal uh, sector. I hope uh, we will have a mechanism as Parliament to always uh, get a report that gives an implication on the negative effect a law will have on pay slips of, of Kenyans. Having said that, Madam Speaker, the point I want to make on this law, Madam Speaker, is uh, that the last time I met, I read the Constitution, Senator Miriam, cooperatives is a devolved function. If you read the, if you read the fourth schedule, part two, section seven E, cooperatives are devolved function to our county governments. And uh, why I'm saying this, Madam Speaker, is because budget or fin allocation of money follows functions. When, when we come up with a law like this, that seems to be giving a lot of responsibilities and duties to the minister, what that means that in budget making process, this will be factored. Because there is a law that has been enacted by Parliament that has given the minister responsibilities. The minister needs staff. Minister needs to do supervision the way you have said. is the one who will uh, declare redundant cooperatives. He will automatically in his budget request say, look, we have new pieces of legislation that have been passed by Parliament that we need to implement as a ministry. So we need an increase, an increased allocation in our budget. Why, Madam Speaker? Can we trust our ministers at the county level? I mean, I, they may not be our friends. I have one in Yamira, luckily for me, is my friend, in charge of cooperatives called Bernard Maina from North Mogrango, Mawawa Ward. That gentleman can take care of all the issues that have been mentioned here in running cooperatives. That way, we are able to put a strong case when we are sharing money to give more money to counties. Honorable Cheptumo, why on earth should we, 13 years after the passage of the 2010 Constitution, come up with a law and you are still making reference to the minister for a devolved function, Madam Speaker? Why can't we devolve registration of cooperatives back to the counties? The human being, whether it's a lawyer, Madam Speaker, the, the person to be employed in Nairobi, and the person who will be employed at the county level will discharge the, the same functions. How come we can allow a criminal or anybody who has a civil dispute to go to a court in Yamira, file a case, and a determination is made at the county? And that is final. Why must we say that to, to register a circle we need a commission of cooperatives in Nairobi? What for? We can have several commissioners of cooperatives at the count level, Mr. Speaker, so that you register our counties in real time. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the way we are evaluated as a country, the speed at which we are doing business, the speed at which we are allowing businesses to be registered, time frame is taken into account. Now here we are saying we are giving the person in charge 30 days to register a cooperative. Why can't it be done in a record 24 hours? If, if my account can be opened by a bank for me to put money in 48 hours and I have a card, 
something that is digital. I will put into an ATM and I get the money. What is so difficult, Mr. Speaker? I'm challenging Senator Miriam to remove this belief that everything must be done by the national government. No! We can do it at the county level and do it very successfully. Mr. Speaker, when I grew up, when I was growing up, we had a, a cooperative society in Iborabu called Eronge Cooperative Society. That's where we used to deliver our pyrethrum. Those days, agriculture was thriving. My late father, my almighty God rest his soul in eternal peace, Mzege Karamogen, was doing farming, uh, pyrethrum, milk, tea. And Mama Mukami, my mother, was left to be in charge of pyrethrum and milk. And she used to deliver those produce to Eronge Cooperative Society in a market called Tinderit. Mr. Speaker, you, you know my home, you have been there. In a market called Tinderit. And at the end of the month, she would go and collect her dues. She would feel proud that she has gotten a salary at the end of the month, not hawking. We were not hawking milk, where you are, you are getting 10 shillings, 20. No, you deliver to Eronge Cooperative, and at the end of the month, you get your income. And things were working. But unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, those things have since died, even with the coming of devolution. Eronga Cooperative Society is not there. In my own home, my, where I came from, where I was born, in West Mogirango, Bosamaro Ward, people had uh, all those cash crops. Pyrethrum was there. I don't know whether there is any senator here who will tell you that they still have pyrethrum. It's dead. Milk. We used to deliver milk to KCC. K KCC. Mr. Speaker, that, that is from your account, you know it. We share it. Actually, it's on the boundary. We used to deliver milk to KCC. All farmers in Kisi, by then it was the larger Kisi. We only had one district for Omogusi, Kisi. We all used to deliver our milk to KCC. My people in uh, Wasamaro uh, Ward used to deliver their pyrethrum to Sironga, to Makairo, to Tinga. And they would get their money. And the ones in Tinga Cooperative own even buildings in Kisi Town, Mr. Speaker. Now what, I'm ex what I expected from devolution, Mr. Speaker, is that we'll hype it up. I feel sad, Madam Speaker, that my people famed for f farming in bananas are still hawking bananas at Ikonge. They're hawking bananas at Tinga Market there at Keumbu, Mr. Speaker, without using a cooperative. And that way, Mr. Speaker, we are not getting value for money. There is no value addition. Our counties, our governors, my governor, Mze Nyaribo, please wake up and help our farmers. We want to see more money into the pockets of our farmers, Mr. Speaker. We have pineapples in, uh, in, in North Mogrango constituents, where the governor comes from. That is his constituency. We need to see those farmers with their pineapples being put into a cooperative. And we do value addition, Madam Speaker. What is so special about uh, thicker canners that they can uh, process those pineapples and send them abroad? Mr. Speaker, does it mean the money you get in Bomet cannot produce uh, uh, butter and you ship it abroad? You can. We can. That's what we need to see from our county governments, Madam Speaker. That way, we can be proud, Madam Speaker, that devolution is helping our people. We are affirmed for bricks in Kitutu Masaba constituents. But these guys are selling them as individuals. There is no circle for farmers dealing with bricks. We have avocados in Kisi. But these things, are, these farm producers are all being sold like hockey. We need to help our uh, farmers. We need value addition. We have bamboo. We have the traditional vegetables, spaghetti. If, if our circles were working, if our county governments were, were to support our farmers with strong cooperatives, these vegetables can be packaged and be sold in dollars in America, Mr. Speaker. So this law, Senator Miriam, is a very good, uh, is a very good uh, initiative. I want to thank you for it. 
but I'm making a very special appeal that we should do away with these things of uh, putting ministers, cabinet secretaries, to meddle into functions that are devolved. Section 2C. Why should the cabinet minister, the secretary, be the one doing framework for standards for development and growth of cooperative societies? Why can that be done by CC cooperatives in Yamira? Why should the CS national government be the one formulating uh, management for cooperative societies? These things can be done at uh, the count level. It can be done by our our own uh, CECs at the count level. It can be done by our chief officers. So I want to propose that we do away with most of these references to our cabinet uh, secretaries and we leave it down at the count level. I'm happy with what is in section 3, 3A, the proposed section 3A, where you have actually given power to the CEC cooperatives. Like in Yamira now, that power would be exercised by my CEC cooperative, our CEC cooperative, Mr. Bernard uh, Maina. I'm impressed with the, the proposal now we pick uh, members of uh, the tribunal. But again, Senator Miriam, why are you giving power to the CS cooperatives to pick members of the tribunal? Why, why Mr. Speaker? Why should the minister be the one picking members of the tribunal for cooperatives? Let us devolve these tribunals to the counties, okay? Why are we telling SRC to come in and set salaries for, for members of tribunals? Let that be a function that can be done by the JSC. I'm a proud member of the Law Society of Kenya. I'm, I'm proud that you have proposed that LSK should give us two members. But I'll urge you to delete the part three that is saying that the minister should also pick three members. Let us allow the members of the legal fraternity, LSK, to pick members of this tribunal. Then the chairman can be uh, interviewed and appointed by Judicial Service Commission. I agree with you. Then once they are in office, they themselves will recruit their own uh, secretary. Madam Speaker, my spirit is that we need, by, sorry. Make reference to the chair, Mr. Speaker. Yes, 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 Mr. Madam Speaker, Madam. sorry. Mr. Speaker, the, 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 once the tribunal is in place, they can uh, appoint their own uh, secretary, Mr. Speaker. When I served as the chair of law society, I, I was privileged to appoint many people to serve in various uh, tribunals, including and I hope I'm not going to embarrass him. Justice Mwaniki Kashoka, whom, whom I appointed to the uh, arbitration, I mean the procurement appeals tribunal. And you know what? The guy rose after serving there is now a distinguished judge of the court of appeal. You see? So let's have faith in our uh, professional body, law society. Let us give them the discretion to pick for us people, lawyers of repute, as long as they can meet the chapter six requirements, they serve uh, in those tribunals. Uh, otherwise, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I support, uh, I support this bill with the proposed uh, uh, amendments and really thank uh, Senator Miriam uh, for coming up with this bill and I hope that we'll make some contribution in strengthening our circles so that uh, farmers who are the majority members of these circles can see fruits of devolution. I support Mr. Speaker and thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Congo, Senior Counsel. Uh, I know that in your contributions you made reference to the distinguished Senator Omar Sheikh Mariam as Miriam. I'm very sure that is because of where you come from. Otherwise, the name is pronounced as Mariam. Thank you very much, Senator. Senator Murango, James Kamau. Asante sana, Mr. Speaker. Kwa kunipa nafasi kuchangia mswa ndambao unafaa kurekembisha sheria ambayo inausika na vya vya ushirika. Mr. Speaker, mimi ni Senator wa Kenya, 
kutoka kaunti ya Kirinyaga. Kirinyaga tuko na vyama vya ushirika 14 ambavyo vinashughulika na kahawa ya kulima ambayo inatoka katika viwanda 75. Tuko na chama kimoja kikubwa cha ushirika ambao inashikanisha hizo ya madogo za ushirika 14 ambayo inaitwa Kirinyadi Cooperative Union ambayo iliundwa baada tu ya kupata huru. Ningetaka niseme ya kwamba vyama vya ushirika ni muhimu sana kwa sababu wale wanaouza mazao yao kupitia vyama vya ushirika kuungana na ambapo mswahili husema umoja ni nguvu wanaweza kusaindika kupata beinafu katika ukuzanji wa mchele pia katika eneo la Mwea tuko na vyama vya ushirika moja inaitwa Rainisha la, 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 la Sako na tuko na MRGM ambayo pia inasaidia wakulima katika mambo ya kukuza na kuuza mpunga tuko na vyama vya ushirika eneo la Kangai kwa sababu ya ndizi tuko na vyama vya ushirika kwa sababu ya maziwa kama kilima dairy na zinginezo Mustaiki speaker kitu ambayo imekuwa ni ya kusunisha ni kwamba sheria iliyoko wale ambao wamekuwa katika vyama vya ushirika kwa muda mrefu wamepata matundu ya kupenyea na kuanza kuwafinya wakulima na ndio maana nataka kumshukuru senator Mariam kwa sababu sheria kama hii na marekebisho ambayo tutafanyia itakuwa ya muhimu mkubwa kurekebisha shida tuliko nazo pale Niruhusu mtaiki Mr. Speaker niongee juu ya vyama vya ushirika ambao vinahusika na ukuzanji na uzanji wa kahawa katika Kenya hii ambayo shinda iliyoko inafanana kila mahali uendapo kwa mkulima wa kahawa kutoka Kirinyaga mkulima wa Kirinyaga kahawa kutoka Tongaren mkulima wa kahawa kutoka Mount Ergon na kwingineko Msaingi speaker katika sheria tuliko nazo ambazo nafikiria tutaweza kutibu kwa hii sheria ya marekebisho ambayo imeletwa na Senator Mariam ni kwamba ukienda kwa chama za cha shirika kama vile chama za ushirika cha Mutira na kingine kinaitwa chama cha ushirika cha Kiberegwi ambao juzi walikuwa na mgomo na kumbandua wenye walikuwa wanaka wana, wana, wana ndio walikuwa ndio wenye kiti wa vile vyama unapata ya kwamba mtu kuwa na mtu mmoja mwenye anaongoza kama kuna jambo nadhaa kufanywa kuna yule mwanzilishi wa honja ambaye anaitwa proposer na yule anayeunga mkono anaitwa seconder unapata kwamba mwenyekiti wa chama cha ushirika kama kile anaweza omba hata shilingi milioni 300 ama 400 na katika kuomba zile pesa unakuja kupata kwamba mali ambayo inakuja ndio inakuwa dhamana ni ya wakulima sasa ningesema mustaiki speaker ni vizuri wakati wakati tunaangalia marekebisho vya vya ushirika iwe kabisa tunaweka sheria ambako hautawezekana kukopa pesa ya wakulima bila kuhusisha wakulima wa zaidi ya theruthi mbili wote ambao ni wenyekiti ambao ni wanachama katika ile chama cha ushirika jambo la pili mstaki speaker ni kwamba vya mami vingi vya ushirika pia ndio zimekuja na kuunda sakos kirenyaga bado tuko na shinda kuna chama ushirika moja inaitwa Ruama ambayo ilikuwa na Ruama Sako ambayo tayari imefunga milango na pesa ya wakulima. Kuna chama ingine inaitwa Mwerili Bupande wa Kishogo nao pia wamefunga milango na pesa zote za wakulima wakaenda nazo na magunia. Mustaiki speaker lazima tutafute ku, kuangalia hii kwa sheria kwamba kama ni mwenye kiti ambao unasimamia chama za, ush, za ushirika ikienda iwe utafanya hiyo chama ku, kufirisika unafaa pia mali yako iende na kuhakikisha kwamba wakulima wenyewe wamerekeshwa pesa zao kwa sababu msaiki speaker ukiangalia kama Ruama shinda ambayo imekuwa Ruama sasa imeenda kumaliza karibu mwaka mzima na wakulima ambao walikuwa wamepata pesa zao kupitia chama cha ushirika cha Ruama wakaweka katika sako ya Ruama pesa yao ikapotea ambao walikuwa wamepata kutoka kwa kahawa siku ya leo wanangoja wale ambao wana vyuo vya usalama DCI kumaliza kesi ili waweze kutambua pesa zao zilienda wapi na ile pesa ilikuweko pale ni pesa ya matimbambu ni karo ya shule 
ni pesa ya matumizi ya kinyumbani leo hii bando wanahangaika na ndio shuru ipatikane na waweze kupata haki yao atujui itakaa miaka ngapi kwa hivyo ningesema lazima tukaze hii sheria ili hata mtu mwenye atakuja kuwa mwenyekiti wa chama cha ushirika asiwe hata siku moja anaingiwa na akili ya kupora maji mali ama pesa ya wakulima mustaki speaker pia kuna shinda kubwa kwa sababu vyama mingi vya ushirika pia vimeingiliwa na wakritimba wakati serikali inajaribu kupabana na mageuzi ya kuhakikisha kwamba mkulima anapata pesa yake kwa mfano utaangalia kwamba na uniruhusu mustaki speaker ni peane mfano na kirinyaga utapata kwamba katika vyama vya ushirika vya kirinyaga vyote 14 wamekata wakulima pesa wamejenga mtambo wa kusaka kahawa mahali kunaitwa keaga wale wale wakulima wako na kampuni ya kuuza kahawa moja moja katika soko la kahawa la Narombi lakini kwa sababu kuna pesa ambayo inapeangwa wale mawakala ambao wanauza kahawa katika soko ya kahawa ya Narombi ambayo ni, ni, ni asilimia mbili unapata ya kwamba wale wenye kiti wa vyombo vya ushirika wanakuja wanahongwa na asilimia moja wanatoa kahawa ya kulima pasipo ruhusa wanaenda wanapelekea wale wa kritimba kahawa ya kulima inapotea na, nasema hivyo na najua kwamba kwa mfano mzuri ni, ki, ni, ni chama cha ushirika cha Kiberigwi kwa hivyo mstaiki speaker hii sheria tuliyonayo sasa tukiweza kuimbana ili wakora wasiweze kupata mahali ya kupenyea hivyo tutaweza kusaidia mkulima pale pengine ni kwamba kuna utepetevu na ningetaka ni shukuru wale ambao wanahusika na vyama vya ushirika katika katuzi la Kirinyaga kuna jamaa mzuri sana pale anaitwa Haniel mwenye amekuwa akifanya kazi nzuri katika vyama vya, vya ushirika na ndio naunga mkono pia honja wa Morgan ya kwamba lazima tujaribu kwamba tugatue mambo mengi katika vyama vya ushirika ili tuweze kusaidia wakazi lakini pia lazima tuhakikisha pale kuna wafanyi kazi wa kutosha wanaoshughulikia mambo na sheria kuhakikisha kwamba zinafuatiliwa na wale ambao wamechaguliwa kama wenyekiti katika vyama vya ushirika wale ambao wanasimamia vyama vya ushirika inabidi pia katika sheria tuliona hapo naona imepatia nguvu waziri wa wakatuzi ama waziri wa kaunti nguvu ya kuweza kufanya mambo kadhaa zile nguvu ni nzuri ili waweze kuwa pia wafanye kazi kwa pamoja na, wiza, na, na waziri wa kilimo katika kaunti kuhakikisha bidhaa nyingi mstaki speaker zenye zinauzwa kupitia vyombo vya ushirika zinafaidi mkulima nikimalizia kuna zao lingine nzuri sana katika Kenya hii ambayo inaitwa makandamia na korosho mstaki speaker ukienda sehemu hii uzunguke uwezi pata hata chama moja cha ushirika cha wale ambao wanauza korosho ama wale wanauza makandamia ama wale wanauza bixa uwezi pata na hiyo imepatia nafasi wale wa kilitimba ambao wanafinyilia wakulima kuja kununua kwa bei dhaifu bei ya chini sana makandamia njuzi ilikuwa inanuliwa ilikuwa ni kama ilikuwa na namba mbaya kama chumvi njuzi tu lakini hiyo yote ni kwa sababu wananchi wanja kuja kufanya vyombo vya ushirika waweze kuuza mazao yao kwa pamoja na waweze kufikia soko ambayo ni nzuri kwa nini ni kwa sababu hawanja hawanja hawanjaweza kuelezewa vizuri na kukarishwa chini wasome umuhimu ya kuwa na vyama vya ushirika mimi kama seneta wa Kirinyaga nimeweza kukaa na wao chini na tukasema ya kwamba tukitaka kuwa na, na, na kupata mbei nzuri katika mazao yetu kama ni makandamia ukiangalia zile vyombo vya ushirika zenye, 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 zenye zinatumika na, na wale, wale wanakuza kahawa zinaweza pia kutumika kwa sababu ratili wako nayo wako na magala ya kuweka mazao kama ya makandamia wako na wafanyikazi wako na usalama kwa hivyo kama tunaimisha wote na tuwaelimishe kwamba vyo vya ushirika ndio vitakuwa kuwaondoa katika lindi la umaskini wanaweza kutufuata na tuweze kuwasaidia katika kuuza makandamia yao na ya mwisho kabisa mstaiki speaker ni kwamba kati ya kaunti ya saba yule mkaguzi mkubwa kamishna 
kwa vya ushirika anakaa na rombi ningetaka tuwe makini sana kwa sababu wakati mkopo unahitajika katika vya ushirika wakipewa kitu inaitwa kwa kimombo borrowing power nguvu ya kuomba hiyo kwanza inapeanwa na wakulima katika katika chama cha ushirika na kuhakikisha ya kwamba wanaenda kuomba pesa na nje inafaa yule commissioner wa ma, ma, wa, 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 wa vya vya ushirika anafaa pia angalie na hakikisha kwamba kila kitu kiko sahihi lakini kwa muda ya miaka tano imeisha unaweza angalia kwamba wale watu wale wasimamishi wenye kiti wa vya ushirika wanaenda wanaenda kuomba pesa kwa halmashauri ama kwa watu binafsi ambao wajapewa leseni ama ruhusa kukopesha pesa na hapo ndo wakulima wengi sana sana kawa wamekuwa kupoteza pesa yao kwa hivyo lazima tukaze kamba kwa sababu tujue ya kwamba vyama vya ushirika pia vyama vya ushirika unapata wan, pesa nyingi sana inapitia katika vyama vya ushirika tujue nani atakuwa anapeana ruhusa kukopa sahihi mwenyekiti wa chama cha ushirika peke yake na bimbi yake na kijana yake moja moja akuja unga mkono, mkono honja proposal na huyo mwingine akuja unga mkono anaweza kopa hata milioni tatu bila kuhusisha wakulima. Kwa hivyo lazima tuweke indandi ya watu ambao wanafaa kupitisha honja ama ili mwenyekiti aweze kukopa. Asante sana mstaiki speaker. Thank you Senator uh, Morango. Senator Osotsi Godfrey. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to also make my contribution on the cooperative amendment bill uh, that is being sponsored by Senator Maria. And I want to start by thanking her for bringing this uh, very, very important piece of legislation for consideration by this House, Mr. Speaker. I think, uh, Mariam, you have really tried uh, to bring issue-based legislation in this House uh, this is just being one of the many legislation you have brought in this house. Mr. Speaker, as uh, has been said, uh, cooperatives are a key um, uh, vehicles in promoting economic growth in any country. And uh, many of us here, we have done things, uh, a lot of our investments, even paid our, uh, our fees for our children and for ourselves using cooperatives. And um, there are good stories that we can talk about uh, cooperatives. Uh, there are also very bad stories that can be said about cooperatives. But this particular legislation, Mr. Speaker, is very important uh, because you know that uh, cooperatives under the fourth schedule cooperative societies are devolved. Uh, but this particular parent act, the Cooperative Society Act uh, 1997, is long overdue, Mr. Speaker, uh, and it's important that that particular parent act should be overhauled, Mr. Speaker. I want to respect the work of Senator Mariam but I also suggest that I think it's high time that the entire act has to be overhauled to align it with the current realities, to align it to the Constitution of Kenya uh, 2010, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have had the new CS for cooperative talk passionately about the need to uh, repeal the Cooperative Society Act uh, 1997 so that to ensure that it is aligned to the realities of our current times and it's aligned to our constitution. Uh, I would uh, say that uh, the, this particular bill is uh, very comprehensive but only captures the, what we call the primary societies, how they are registered, how they are managed, 
the policies around them goes uh, further slightly to also talk about the other levels of uh, cooperatives. That's the cooperative union, unions and the apex society. Mr. Speaker, uh, this bill um, uh, uh, somehow is, uh, is recommending that uh, the primary cooperative society, their governance, their registration, their licensing, all that should be overseen by county governments. Uh, and uh, we shall have a, a county director in charge of cooperatives who is going to perform that under uh, uh, the relevant CEC uh, in the county. Mr. Speaker, it now leaves uh, national government to handle the matter of uh, national policy and uh, matters of apex societies and cooperative union. Uh, Mr. Speaker, whereas I support that, uh, but as I said earlier, I think it's important that we have to relook at the entire parent act, which is, uh, in my view, outdated and it needs to be aligned. And as we do that, we should factor in the primary societies, but also look at ways of uh, improving the functioning and management of uh, cooperative unions and APEC society. Mr. Speaker, we have read in the news that uh, Cusco, which is uh, the well-known APEC society in this country, there are serious, serious management <coughs> issues. But we wonder why action has not been taken against the management and the committee responsible for this Cusco. We cannot have a situation where uh, members' money is lost because of fraud, because of corruption, and because of mismanagement. So, and that's why I said we need to overhaul the entire cooperative act so that we look at issues of governance, Mr. Speaker, issues of corruption and all that. I know in the clause 2A, uh, Senator is trying to propose that the persons who are involved in uh, running a cooperative society must be guided by a number of principles. In the list of principles provided, Mr. Speaker, I do not see two important principles. The first principle is a principle on uh, accountability. It is not listed, Mr. Speaker. Accountability is key in the running of our cooperative society uh, from the experience that we have seen in this country. Mr. Speaker, I have also had a suggestion or a proposal from the new cab uh, cabinet secretary for cooperative that is a high time that cooperatives or uh, manage, uh, leadership of cooperatives must observe some democratic uh, principles, democratic principles in terms of uh, term of office. We have uh, leaders of cooperative society who have been officials for ages, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I even met one who is too old to be an official and he's been there for over 20, 30 years. Mr. Speaker, this is how corruption comes in. I hope the new CS for cooperative is going to uh, ensure or come up with a, a further amendments uh, to the Cooperative Act to ensure that we have a term of office for these people. I know Senator Eddie, who is uh, seated in front of me, has been uh, pushing for a bill to introduce term of office for trade union. Another area that we need to look at, and I want to encourage him to do that. Another area that we need to do that, it's a cooperative movement, Mr. Speaker. That you cannot argue, Mr. Speaker, that uh, you present yourself to the election to be elected, and therefore people elect you, and there is no problem with that. People elect you because 
you bribe them with the money that you have stolen from them. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to say and encourage the new CS to bring further amendments to the Cooperative Act to ensure that we have a term limit for officials of the cooperative movement in this country. That will be the first step in addressing the issue of accountability, the issue of graft, and the issue of uh, lack of transparency uh, in uh, management of the cooperative society. So I would suggest, uh, Senator Maria, that under Clause 2A, one of the principles that you need to add is just to say that uh, they will adhere to Article 10 principles. And that will cover all the issues of transparency, accountability, equity, uh, regional balance, and all those. Mr. Speaker, the, the act is a good attempt. As I said earlier, my, uh, my best scenario would have been that we have a total overhaul of the entire, entire, entire act so that we have a completely new act uh, that will guide our uh, cooperative movement in line with the emerging best practices in the cooperative movement. Mr. Speaker, though this bill specifies the functions of the Commissioner for Cooperative, and uh, Commissioner for Cooperative basically is supposed to handle function at the national level. Uh, that is basically the Apex Society and the Cooperative Union. And that the respective county directors will handle matters of the primary uh, societies. But Mr. Speaker, when you read further in the bill, there is uh, ambiguities which I uh, would uh, uh, encourage the mover of this bill to try and uh, clean up these ambiguities so that there is clarity uh, on the role of the county uh, director of cooperatives and commissioner for cooperative. Let me give you an example, Mr. Speaker. If you go to clause 10, uh, one, it is saying this, if the commissioner or a director is not satisfied that an apex society, a cooperative union, or a primary society, as the case may be, has not been complied with the act, and is of the opinion that steps may be taken to comply with this act, the commissioner may provisionally register the society or the union for a period not exceeding uh, one year, or uh, on such terms and uh, condition as uh, the commissioner may specify in writing. You know, when you read this uh, particular provision, Mr. Speaker, it implies that the commissioner for cooperative, who is supposed to be doing the national function, can as well determine the provisional registration of uh, a primary society. That is uh, confusing, and I would uh, encourage that that section be amended. If you go further, Mr. Speaker, on clause number 11, section 7A, where it says the commissioner may suspend or cancel the registration of a cooperative society if, and then it lists there all the issues that the commissioner can do. Uh, I think it is important to have clarity on this because a primary society is also listed as a cooperative society, Mr. Speaker. So which one is which? So I think it's important for that confusion uh, to be removed. And also, I think we need further consultation with the uh, other stakeholders, uh, the Ministry of uh, Cooperatives and the other stakeholders, so that we can have a uniform uh, 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 bill that uh, overhauls the entire cooperative society, but that have been widely consulted within the sector. 
and that, that way we will be moving in the right direction. So I want to encourage uh, Senator Maria to consult further uh, because I know the Ministry of Cooperative uh, happen to be having some advantage. I know that they are coming up with a bill, uh, almost finalizing the bill, and they will be bringing it to this house that captures all possible amendments, all possible, relax, relax, all possible amendments to the cooperative, the parent cooperative act of 1997. Uh, and uh, yeah, let Senator him inform me. You know this Senator like Morango is coming from cooperative areas and is a very serious chair of agriculture, has more information. Let him inform me. Senator Morango proceed to inform. Give him the microphone, clerk. Thank you very much, Deputy Paterinda, for it's a, it's a privilege to inform you. Um, the bill for cooperative is already in the second reading of the National Assembly already, for the cooperative bill. So it has already reached there. Thank you. That is very important information, I yeah. believe, uh, Senator Sotsi. Thank uh, you. Thank you for that information. Uh, and uh, I have not had an opportunity to look at it. But you see, Mr. Speaker, now these are issues. Uh, we, we process some bills here. National Assembly processes similar bills. And then what happens? I think uh, the Senate should work very closely with the National Assembly so that the bills that we bring here do not appear like they are uh, uh, in conflict with the bills or uh, similar bills to the ones in the National Assembly. Uh, because my view is that we need a total overhaul of the Parent Act, that is the Cooperative Society Act 1997. Uh, this bill has made a very strong attempt at addressing the issue of how primary societies will be managed. But there are a lot of other things which must be aligned to the current circumstances, to the current best practices, which are not in this bill. So I would encourage that uh, a lot of consultation should be done so that we know the way forward. Otherwise, this is a very good attempt for a member, a first-term senator. Uh, I think this is encouraging, and we must support uh, this bill, but with those issues I have highlighted, addressed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I support. Uh, senator Manzo, Daniel. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate Senator Mariam <coughs> for a very big attempt to clean up the cooperative movement. Mr. Speaker, I want to own that uh, at one time in life, I was the secretary for cooperatives in Kenya. And I'm very much aware of the troubles of the movement. At that time, my minister was Joseph Nyaga. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. And uh, the movement has been yearning for this moment. And I like what she has done. This is an amendment of the original Cooperative Act, and uh, when I was the secretary and the new constitution had come to power, we at that moment cleaned it up to align it with the constitution. So it reads cabinet secretary. I can see there is a proposal here to move from minister to cabinet secretary. That amendment has already been made. But then in the last Senate, uh, Senator uh, Professor Zani, who is a social transformationist, also made a very big effort like this one, and in fact came up with a total new act which was processed successfully in the Senate. But when it went to National Assembly, Mr. Speaker, it lapsed out of time. It was another very good work. And I think Senator Mariam should also look at that. And I, at, uh, at the same time, when that was being done, uh, Professor Zani seemed to be in conflict with the movement. She, there was no really proper um, consultation with the movement. And uh, uh, when we sat down to reconcile the movement and her, uh, the meetings became very stormy. And she adopted the attitude of forcing that law, which was more of academic law, uh, while at the same time the ministry was making pleas that their law, at that moment their draft was stuck at cabinet. Finally it came from cabinet, and now you hear it is a second reading, 
at the National Assembly while we are doing a duplication here by doing a second reading. But I want to say that cooperative movement is devolved under uh, Schedule 4 of the Constitution. So this is the right place that particular act should have come and then it will migrate uh, to the National Assembly. But that having happened, I really uh, want to plead with Senator uh, Mariam that uh, before we go to third reading, we need a thorough consultation with the movement, we need a thorough consultation with the ministry, we need a thorough consultation with the National Assembly so that we can amalgamate the proposals of Professor Zani, which were very good, the proposals of Senator Maria, which are very good, and what is already is in the bill. And I want to say that the bill currently is a total overhaul. And I want to say that the cooperative movement begins from the village, comes to, uh, you know, the counties, and then is also national, and then it's also international. We have the International Cooperative Alliance, uh, which carries all the cooperative societies in the world. And I, I had shared with Senator Mariam, and I was asking her whether she had taken time to compare notes with the best practices in the world, especially in Europe. Uh, and uh, I think Senate should have sponsored her in proper consultation and with the committee to visit some of the best practices in the world and bring them home. Uh, other than the cooperative, uh, the, the cooperative societies, then you have the National Cooperative Alliance here. Uh, you have um, huge businesses associated with the cooperative movement, the cooperative bank, the CIC insurance, uh, and uh, they all work together uh, and in consultation with the international movement, which is very well done in Canada and uh, in the US. In fact, it is a very good business model. If you really want to transform a nation, if you really want to change the economic situations of a nation, uh, when people work in cooperatives, they uh, pull resources together and they are very strong. But unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, there has been a lot of corruptions in the cooperatives. And there have been a lot of cartels in the cooperatives. Uh, there is also the SACO Societies Regulations, you know, Law SASRA, which we just did the regulations as a Senate the other day. And then we have um, organizations which uh, are associated with the cooperative movement. So, Mr. Speaker, this is a very heavy movement. It's a 15 million member movement in Kenya. Uh, we still have cooperative societies dealing with tea, cooperative societies dealing with coffee, uh, cooperative societies uh, uh, dealing with milk, which you know their fate. And uh, you know even the new KCC, we heard there was a request for statement the other day from Senator Bandago. Uh, and the complications are so much that one, we need a law to sort them out. Two, uh, we need uh, uh, the government to, to be involved so that, because it is part of the problem. And therefore, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, there is every need and uh, uh, every use to make thorough consultations and even to consult the counties, uh, you know, very well and to make sure that the counties are carried along, uh, to make sure that COG is involved, to make sure that uh, COG has done also thorough consultations. But I want to say the Commissioner of Cooperatives is the most important person in this law. He is, in fact, uh, uh, more responsible uh, and expected to take care of the movement better than the Permanent Secretary or Principal Secretary and the Cabinet Secretary. He is a key person. He's a registrar. And then, you know, there is only one registry in the country. So this registry needs to be devolved in a way. But without the parent registry, then you are likely to duplicate the names and the roles. And therefore, uh, while devolution is a reality and is in the Constitution, this particular law uh, needs to be a lot to synchronize a lot of things. What do you do with the original registry, which is in the national government? And what do you do with the other smaller registries in the counties? Uh, so when you propose to change uh, 
from commissioner of cooperatives to a director of cooperatives, then there will be a contradiction with the counties because the counties have the directors while uh, uh, the commissioner as, uh, as, 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 as is, is at the national government. And there's actually a cooperative policy which went through the National Assembly some years ago. Uh, and with the policy, it is where you draw the law. So this policy has, has gone all the way uh, to be approved even by the president after it has been passed by the houses. And therefore, there is all that to be looked at. I like the, the work which has been put. Bearing in mind this is an amendment bill. It is seeking to amend certain sections. It is not seeking to overhaul. Uh, and uh, it has also come in very good faith. It has heavily borrowed from previous researchers. It is very well done, meaning that uh, Mariam must have consulted serious experts. And I want to say that the cooperative movement, especially the, the agricultural one, is even in northeastern. There are farmers uh, who used to come to see me in office from all the way from northeastern who run cooperatives there very seriously. Uh, there are farmers in Mandera, there are farmers in Garissa, uh, along the rivers, and then there are many other businesses, even uh, herding of cows, which are in cooperatives. Now, the cooperative movement is very strong also in China, uh, and, uh, but the best practices are found in Europe, the Nordic countries. The milk cooperatives, the transport cooperatives, uh, and that's how we borrowed the matatu circles. They are actually not circles, but they have an element of safety. That's why they fall under circle. And you know there are the many amendments which have been made to streamline the, the, the money region. We have Cusco in Kenya, which is now riddled with a, a lot of problems. And it is the umbrella body in Kenya and uh, well represented, uh, you know, representing the, the cooperative movements in the country. Uh, and the directorship is an, an, an election uh, from the regions. Similarly with the CIC. So, Mr. Speaker, I really want to plead with the Senator Mariam, well, before we go to third reading, to first of all find out what is happening in the National Assembly. Because we cannot be passing a law here, which we can easily pass today or by this week, then transit it to the National Assembly. Then the National Assembly passes an act, and both of them cross each other, then they bring that other act here, while Mariam's act goes to the National Assembly. First, we want to save Parliament time. Secondly, we really want to save Kenyans. Thirdly, the cooperators are very, um, are very, you know, um, eager to get a new law. And then we have many other institutions associated with this. We have housing cooperatives, we have, uh, which have not been taken care of thoroughly here. We have a cooperative university, which we set up from the cooperative college. Uh, during my time as a secretary, and we borrowed uh, uh, the model from Modragon in Spain, North Spain, Bilbao, and then brought that model here, a university a cooperative, which some people interfered with, but now has gone back on track. So we have a cooperative university. Where do you place it in this? We have a, we have a cooperative bank. We have a, a you know, a lot of uh, other institutions associated with the cooperatives. We have even assigned obviously cooperatives in the lowest level. We, are, we, we have all manner of cooperatives, but there is no law, I really want to agree with Senator Maria, which regulates all this uh, and synchronizes it properly for the best service of the cooperatives. We need also within this law, although there is a penal code and there is anti-corruption act, to come up with the better practices to streamline corruption. The law in this country, Mr. Speaker, recognizes that uh, uh, cooperatives conduct elections, you know, they, they, are, they, they, they believe in democratic practices. But then the age limit, we have a law dealing with the age limit in this country. They are private organizations which uh, that particular law of retirement at 60, Mr. Speaker, may not apply. Then what, what do you do with this? Somebody is 80 and has been in the cooperative movement for 50 years and has been the same person dealing with the coffee. And then there is the same problems duplicated year after year, Mr. Speaker, uh, and, uh, and uh, never changing, 
Mr. Speaker, uh, never helping the people, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we, we want the people to be served, Mr. Speaker. Shall we all rise, members? Senator Manso, when the House resumes tomorrow, you have got eight minutes to conclude on your contribution to the bill. Honorable Senators, it's now 6.30 p.m., time to adjourn the Senate. The Senate therefore stands adjourned until tomorrow, Thursday, 26th of September, 2024, at 2.30 p.m.